What's up, NFL fans? I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and don't forget to check out and purchase your copy of our latest football game plan book, Stiff Arming Football Myths. We have these available in both PDF and paperback form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you my 2015 NFL Draft Prospect Rankings video. We're taking a look at the running back position. We're going to look at my top 10, some small school prospects, some sleepers, and some fullback prospects that you want to keep an eye on. But first, let's take a look at what goes into my prospect rankings for the running back position. Traits focus instead of a level of competition focus. I always focus on what a guy can do because traits translate. I look at a three game minimum, best, worst, and best competition or matchup. And these rankings, my rankings, are not indicative of where I think these players will actually go in April's draft. Todd Gurley is my number one rated running back prospect in this year's draft class. He's explosive. He's a game breaker, a powerful runner. I think he's very underrated in what he brings to the table from a receiver perspective. And I think this is a guy that gets better with volume each and every carry. And he also has above average vision. Now he does take on many direct shots. You want him to develop a little bit more wiggle and he's coming off an ACL injury. But overall, this guy plays a lot like a more explosive version of LeGarrette Blunt. Melvin Gordon out of Wisconsin has good body lean. He's a pick and slide type of a runner, excellent acceleration, and he understands pass protection. This is a guy that won't blow a blitz pickup assignment. He has very good footwork, and he is also a home run hitter. Despite not having game breaking speed, you will not see him get caught from behind. Now, he can be an overstrider at times, which causes him to lose balance and gets knocked over. But overall, solid prospect, and I do compare him to Jamal Charles without the blazing speed, but he has more than enough acceleration to break the long run. I'm also a big fan of Amir Abdullah out of Nebraska, earning a first round grade at 5'9", 195. Here's a guy that has elite elusiveness, above average vision, good burst and balance, and also has the receiving skills that you look for in a top flight back. Now he needs to get stronger in the lower body. He tends to go down with arm tackles, and that can't happen at the next level if he wants to earn those consistent feature back type carries. T.J. Yeldon out of Alabama is an extremely shifty runner with very good footwork for a guy his size at 6'2", 220. He also has very good vision and runs square to the line of scrimmage with power and has underrated receiving skills. Now, he's not overly explosive, and he can put the ball on the ground at times. Those are some things you worry about, but the one thing you won't have to worry about is his pass protection. So I believe a guy like Yeldon can be on the field for all three downs. Duke Johnson out of Miami is a very fluid runner with very good vision, underrated inside runner as well, despite only being 5'9", 185 pounds, 190 pounds, he has good pad level as well. Now, he does have a bit of an injury history, so you worry about that, and he doesn't break a lot of tackles. That's another thing that's a big concern, but overall, he reminds me a lot of Andre Ellington of the Arizona Cardinals and is worthy of a second-round grade. We know about Carlos Williams' off-the-field issues, and that's what he's going to have to take up with NFL scouts and personnel. But on the field, you have to like what you see. He has above-average athleticism. He's a downhill type of a guy. Also can play the horizontal game. He can provide value as a kickoff returner, receiver, and has good natural running ability. And I love his vision and his quickness. Now, he struggles with pad level, which causes him to take a lot of head-on shots. That, again, can't happen at the next level if he wants to sustain a long career. Rashid Williams out of Alfred State is a Deshaun Foster clone, extremely agile, almost as agile as Amir Abdullah. He strings moves together very well and is a fluid runner with underrated running power. Now, he has to be a little bit more cognizant of carrying the football in traffic. He tends to allow it to get away from his body. He can't get overly enamored with making moves. He has to be a little bit more consistent situation as far as who he's going to make miss and get downfield in a hurry. But this is a fine prospect coming out of the small school ranks this season. Mike Davis out of South Carolina is an early entry in this year's draft, 5'9", 225 pounds. And here's a guy that has good burst. He accelerates through the hole, and he plays fast. I love that about his game. He has no wasted movements, always making moves downfield. Now, he also has very good receiving skills, which add to his value 
as a tailback. But the problem is, what's his real weight? We saw him last year at closer to 215. Now he's at 225, might even be 230. So you wonder where his real weight lies and where he can be most productive. I think it's closer to 215. And he also can get too enamored with making moves. Sometimes you just got to plant your foot and go. But he has solid overall skill sets and reminds me a lot of Stephen Ridley that plays for the Patriots. David Cobb out of Minnesota is a guy that you'll see have a productive 10-year career as a professional. He has good all-around game, patience to go with his running skills, and has very good pad level. He's always running behind his pads. Now, he's not overly explosive, and he's a build-up speed type of a guy, not overly quick as well. So you can stop him at or behind the line of scrimmage. But overall, again, a guy that has solid all-around skill set and plays a lot like Pierre Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. Forget all of the fullback talk about Tyler Varga. I think this guy is a tailback through and through. No wasted movement in his game. Above average running skills, solid vision, and also is very shifty for a guy his size. Now, he's a little stiff in the hips, and he's not overly fluid. I wonder if he can lose a little bit weight, maybe five or eight pounds, and get back that fluidity in his running style. But overall, love his game. It reminds me a lot of Christian Michael that plays for the Seattle Seahawks. Jay Ajay out of Boise State graded out as a fourth round prospect for me. He has very good size at six feet, 215 pounds. And what you like about his game is that he's an excellent receiver out of the backfield. He can accelerate and get down the field in a hurry. He has good footwork and a solid overall skill set. Now he has questionable balance. He tends to run high at times and he's not overly strong. And when you combine all of that with a guy that has inconsistent pad level, you're going to see a prospect to get stonewalled at the line of scrimmage, get knocked over awkwardly. I think this describes Ajay to the T. Terrell Watson out of Azusa Pacific reminds me a lot of Brandon Jacobs and how he's a big body back with very good acceleration and is a good volume or spot guy. He can play either role as a pro and what he has to work on, he has to do a better job of avoiding contact at the next level. Otherwise, he won't last long. Now, he's not overly agile, but there's little subtleties in your game, shiftiness that can happen to allow you to not take so many head on shots. I would also kill the fullback talk with Zach Zinner out of South Dakota State. He has the consistency you look for as well as the productivity. Three straight 2,000-yard seasons is very tough to do, but he accelerates through the hole very well, good vision, and also is a very good inside runner. Now, he's a little stiff athletically, more straight line-ish, and plays a little high, and he's going to have to work on getting better pad level on a more consistent basis at the next level, but overall reminds me a lot of Bishop Sankey that plays for the Tennessee Titans. Michael Dyer out of Louisville, another one of these early entry running backs in this year's draft class. Here's a guy that knows how to avoid contact. He's a patient runner and also has value as a kickoff returner. I think he compares favorably to Justin Forrest's set of the Baltimore Ravens. He has to find that consistency in his game on and off the field. And he's not overly athletic, but I do think he has good short area bursts to rip off some big gains. D. Hart out of Colorado State entered the draft early as well. He can make you miss in the phone booth. He has very good vision and also good patience as a runner. I wish you could have seen him prior to the two ACL injuries he suffered at Alabama. So now he lacks the burst and explosiveness. But overall, I think he can excel in a power scheme or a zone blocking scheme. And although I would like to have seen him come back for another season, I think he'll have a fine career as a pro. David Johnson out of Northern Iowa had a big week down in Mobile at the Senior Bowl, but here's a guy that has natural receiving skills. You may even see him lined up more often than not as a receiver, as a pro in certain packages. He's also shifty, and he's versatile. He can play running back. He can play fullback. He can even line up, like I mentioned before, as a receiver. Now, he runs high, and he's a little stiff athletically. and He doesn't power through contact like you want to see a guy his size do on a consistent basis, but plays a lot like Marcel Reese, a guy that's versatile. You can use him anywhere on a football feel and he'll have success because Shouda Spence out of Sacred Heart was one of my favorite running back prospects coming into this season battled a little bit of injuries this year and wasn't as productive but when you look at his game he runs with tremendous balance which allows him to change direction for a guy his size and he's deceptively fast he'll rip off a long run in a heartbeat and he's also very powerful now you wonder about his receiving skills and again those injuries and his weight will he be a fullback or a tailback at the next level but I think he can play both which is why I compared him to Mike Tolbert the first thing that jumps out at you about Tevin Coleman is how he can accelerate. He has great burst, and he can definitely hit the home run. Now, he has marginal change of direction skills and vision, which could limit his opportunities of breaking those long runs at the next level. But if you're running the stretch or if you're running out of the shotgun, Tevin Coleman definitely gives you some value in the backfield. 
John Crockett out of North Dakota State is a four-time national champion that's also a very good receiver. He excels on stretch plays as well as outside zone plays and brings value as a kickoff return specialist. And he also has above average vision. Now his pad level tends to run hot and cold and he must be consistent in lowering the boom to pick up those extra yards. I got the chance to see Ross Sherman twice this year live in person, one versus Lehigh and the other versus Fordham, and I came away with how impressive his versatility is as a football player. He can be a receiver or a runner and also provides value as a kickoff returner. Now, he has good patience as a runner, and he also runs with good acceleration. Now, he's a jack-of-all-trades and a master of none, so you don't know where he'll fit at the next level, but I think he can play both equally as effective, which is why I compared him to Dexter McCluster. Was entry in the draft was entry in the draft was entry in the draft was Josh Robinson out of Mississippi State 5'9", 215 pounds. He has a good feel for the running game. I love the way he runs the football. Compact build and has excellent balance, partly due to the fact that he's 5'9", 215. Now he lacks explosiveness. He has marginal agility, but I think this guy could excel in a zone blocking scheme a la C.J. Anderson for the Denver Broncos. Buck Allen out of USC plays with a lot of passion. He's a one-cut downhill runner. He can get to top speed quickly, and he's going to run through a lot of arm tackles at his size. Now, he has marginal vision and lateral agility, and his legs tend to die on contact. That's not what you want to see from a guy his size, but I do think when you look at what he can bring to the table, he compares favorably to Fred Jackson of the Buffalo Bills. Jawan Edwards out of Ball State has a lot of joint bell to his game. He's quick-footed athlete. He's highly productive and solidly built at 5'9", 215 pounds. Now, his lack of pad level causes him to lose balance, and he's a little stiff athletically. But overall, I think he can be a volume guy in spot duty if you need him to be a productive pro career awaits this young man. Jeremy Langford was a big part of the reason why Michigan State was so successful over the course of his four-year career there. And here's a guy at 6 feet, 211 pounds, can get the corner. He has very good acceleration, and he can hit a lane and really go. Now, he doesn't play with good balance. He has average athleticism, which is why he graded out as a seventh-round prospect. At times throughout his career, you saw teams not wanting to tackle Dominic Brown out of Louisville, 6'2", 230 pounds. And one thing that's very impressive about his game is not only can he handle a lot of carries, he also can catch the football very well and is a solid route runner. And rounding out my tailback rankings is Division Three Dominic Hayden out of Thomas Moore College, a guy that does a great job in playing ahead of the six. He moves the chains. It may not be flashy or explosive. I think he lags both in those areas. But overall, he can get the job done. Good vision, good balance. I think he could have a solid career if given the opportunity. Now let's move over to my fullback rankings. Only five guys graded out as draftable prospects this year. Jalston Fowler out of Alabama leads the way at 5'11", 260. Reminds me a lot of LaRon McClain and what he brings to the table. Here's a guy that can catch the football very well. He can block most importantly. And also in the backfield, he can carry the football if need be in a single back situation. There's a lot of debate of whether or not Mark Weissman out of Iowa should be a tailback or a fullback at the next level. I think if he wants to have a long career, he should be a fullback because he doesn't have the quickness or the elusiveness to be a tailback, although he did carry the football well throughout the course of his career in the Big Ten. Joey Iosifa out of Hawaii at 6 feet 245 is a lot similar to Mark Weissman out of Iowa. And here's a guy that I think will find his home and productivity at the next level at fullback. Larry Black out of Army probably has the more natural running skills out of all of the fullback prospects, but that two-year commitment will push him down the list just a little bit, but I came away highly impressed with how he catches the football down at the East-West Shrine game. And rounding out my top five is Zach Zwinnick. I think he can also have a home at the next level as a fullback, carry the football a lot at Penn State, and I think he'll make his mark very early on special teams. Now, just to recap, here's my rankings for the running backs this year in the 2015 NFL Draft. 26 tailbacks make the list, five fullbacks. Last year, we had 30 tailbacks make the list, and only five guys cracked the top 64. But if you look deep into the fourth, fifth, even in the seventh round, you can find guys that can be spot starters. So I would feel very comfortable with any one of these guys lining up in my backfield.